seeing you on the screen. I don't know how I did that either. It says I'm recording. Hey, we're recording. We're recording. Mm-hmm. We were just we're recording. recording, and then you like, why are you we're recording? recording like, we're recording. We're recording. Oh, we're recording. We're recording. We're recording. Hey, Clint, guess what? Uh, You're wearing a Nova shirt. I'm wearing a Nova shirt. And I'm wearing And I don't get to talk for the first part of this interview because Travis blows me off. Again. Oh, really? Again. 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 Is that starting to hurt your feelings? Not at all, because whatever I get blown off means we're having a killer guest. And today, That's right. honest to goodness, one of the best interviews we've done. Yeah, this this young man, uh, Cody Adcock, the uh, he's become the third starter, the the Sunday starter for the Razorbacks. He's a um, I don't know what he's class. I, I forget what he's classified as, but he transferred he in. Do. Transferred in. Uh, he's an Arkansas boy, uh, but. He had a rough week, you know, well, like a lot of our pitchers in, the, in those last two games against LSU. But I'll tell you, man, he's so impressive, a young man, uh, well-spoken. And I'll tell you, just the way he's taken, you know, you know what he had to deal against, you know, going against Cruz and, you know, giving up those home runs and, and stuff this weekend and having a bad outing. And, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to hesitate to talk about it. You know, he – The fact is – Cruz is Dylan Cruz, I believe. Um, he's going to be the number one player drafted in the draft, and he hit a, he had a pretty good shot off Cody. Cody talks about it, talks about how how you got to switch your mindset, and he, he doesn't he does he didn't run from he didn't run from it at all. No. Not that he's got anything to run from. It happens to everybody, and because of every kid in high school, every high school senior, and all the kids in their junior senior year of college, and some sophomores. Mm. They're gonna say this is the guy we want. The first team gonna get up and say this is the guy we want. And yeah. he got the question against them this week. So yeah. It's a great interview, folks. Enjoy it. We got to thank Hometown Roofing. Hometown Roofing. I do have the actual number ready. Also, listen to the podcast. I'll give Robert Branscombe's personal cell phone number out. 501-581-7235. <laughs> but uh no, they, they come out, they work with your insurance. They'll go pretty much anywhere in the state of Arkansas. They've done my roof. They've done our buddies Wesley's roof. I just did a great job. They're going to do you right. They're going to do a great job. And, uh, you know, especially with the bad weather that's come through, if you got shingles on the ground, uh, if you've had hell come through, uh, if you've had high winds, and you just want to get someone to look at it and make sure, call them up and I'll get on, get on their website. And uh, I believe it's hrroofing.com. Um, I believe that's right. Anyway, look them up on Facebook, whatever you need to. But they will uh, be glad to help you out. It's hrroofer.com. hrroofer.com. Sorry. All right, folks. Enjoy. Sean Michelle. Hit that beat. One, two, three, five. You ever seen a lame man walk? Ever heard a dumb man talk? You ever seen a blind man see? I promise you a can You ever seen a cancer death? Ever seen on a poor get fed? Ever seen a prisoner set free? I promise you a can you for the big c and bigger t podcast i'm look guys we're doing it again we got another great interview uh oh yeah clint's here i'm here wearing an elvis shirt 
Yeah, we, that's all that matters <laughs> is the Elvis shirt. But we got a Cody Arkansas Ad- Razorback pitcher, Cody Adcock. 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 Am I saying that right? Adcock. Yeah. I don't know why I'm not saying that right, or why it's coming out weird. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Cody. It's a simple name. It's a simple name. Cody it's Adcock. <laughs> he's the 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 Sunday starter, newly appointed Sunday starter for the Arkansas Razorbacks. As he's he's an Arkansas boy, but he transferred in. Thanks for the transfer portal. Cody, welcome, man. Yes, Good to have you. Yes, sir. I'm excited to do it. Let's man, uh, it. hey, do you think um, do you think LSU could find a few uh, big guys to play baseball for them? They they, they just got, have those tiny little fellows out there. Got, hey, you know, they those got little them. scrawny little scrawny guys out there playing. No, Tommy dude, they're Watt huge. And, and some other dude are pretty big. <laughs> they're huge. But, Oh yeah, yeah, they got some big dudes. I, I mean, like, and y'all aren't small. No, no, we're not. We're I mean, not. you're you're what six three, six four, something like that. Six four. Yeah. Yes, and I mean, y'all's pitching lineup. Y'all are some. I mean, tall boy. I mean, like y'all aren't. But dude, those those are some men. Y'all. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. And what's and it, Dylan, what's it like lining up and seeing that up to the plate? Six eight. Honestly, Wasn't that one guy six eight, the first baseman? Ooh, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. I know Trey Morgan's not six eight. So okay. And he played for, he played first the second two games. Oh okay. but maybe the first their their first baseman might have been six eight. But honestly, like against guys like Tommy White and Dylan Cruz, like facing those guys is almost like like, it's kind of surreal, you know? Like, Tommy White broke the freshman home run record last year. Dylan Cruz is a big leaguer. He might go 1-1 one, one this year. So, like, seeing facing those guys, like, you really get to see, like, what you're made of. And, you know, I mean, it didn't go the way I planned this weekend, but yeah. we can run it back whenever. That's right. Oh, no, no, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Dylan got one off of you, didn't he? He did. He yeah, did. I'm sorry. But- I didn't want to bring it up, but it was <laughs> – Hey, but, I didn't want to. I didn't want to bum you out, but it was. Oh, that's hey, that's what happens when you fall down 2-0 to the best hitter, one of the best hitters in the country. So, hey, yeah. but that dude, to be fair, was the way he was playing this weekend would have got one off pretty much anybody. Oh yeah, put He's out bad there. Like five thirty-five. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. On, he's a, he's on a hot streak. His bad he's, never just going up in SEC play. As they, as they, as a, as a good commentator would say, he's seeing the ball well right now. Very, very well. <laughs> he's seeing yeah. the ball well right now. Yeah. Well, Cody, man, let's let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, now you grew up Texarkana, right? Yes, sir. Um, Tex- you went to high school on the Arkansas side, right? Yes, sir. So you you've been a hog your whole life, just well, yep. except yep. for a little stint there. A little stint. Well, yeah. yeah. Now, did you up? Uh, now I'm down here in South Arkansas. Okay, so I'm where I was. A, I was a youth pastor in Camden for about. Okay, uh, my little brother's playing in Camden right now. Where at the college? No, he's playing at Camden Fairview. He's in high school. Oh, he is? Okay. Yes, what's, your, what's your little brother's name? Maverick. Maverick Adcock. Yes, sir. He's a freshman. Okay. Wow. Cool. Yep. Um, I'm not. I live in. I live in. I'm a pastor in Thornton now. So I, I live okay. up toward Fordyce. So uh, I'm not really paying as much attention to Camden Fairview as I used to. But yes, sir. Um, but how did how did you Camden Fairview wasn't? I don't think they were all that great when you were. Playing I don't remember. That good. Yeah, I don't, they that good. they didn't have any. Uh, so what was it like growing up in Texarkana? Um, I enjoyed it. You know, my parents have been married for like they've been together for 25 years. So that's always been nice. Uh, my grandparents live right next to us. I think we got 50 acres. So there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, mm. Growing up, I had an older brother. He's two years older than me. He played, uh, he played at Harding for four years. Mm. And so having him really, I felt like 
helped me, you know, like I had somebody to always work out or run or throw with. So I never had a, I never had a shortage of, of, I don't know. Um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but yeah, I mean, I was always doing competition around and somewhere. Yep. And, and having my my older brother's friends around all the time too, like, that was a good thing for me. I feel like made me a little more competitive. Now, now Tired. Cody, go ahead. Now, me and Travis, I have a little brother that's about two years younger than me. Okay. Um, now, one time, I, I don't want to bring this up because we're going to sound like bullies. Like, we could get canceled if I say we, that. We were bullies. Yeah, we were bullies. <laughs> we, we, bullied my, we, we bullied my little brother, and and, and we I love him to death. But uh, we, we basically gave him a thousand splashes one time on the trampoline. We were rest, wrestling fans. Yeah. <laughs> wrestling, and we just kept just jumping on him. <laughs> he never did anything like that to you, I hope. Oh, he got me some – he got me good a few times. I remember one day after practice in high school, me and him got into it, me and my older brother. I don't know what mm. it was about. But uh, he was my ride home, and we got, like, halfway home. And he was like, get out. And I was like, <laughs> me. And it was pouring down rain, and – he made me get out and walk home because I was trying to show him up in front of everybody. And he didn't play. So. <laughs> All right. I, I'm a little bit familiar with Texarkana being from South Arkansas here, being living down in South Arkansas. What's your uh, go-to order at Ironwood Grill? Ooh, I don't know if I've ever been to Ironwood Grill. You've never been to Ironwood? Okay. You thought you were asking a cool question. Like, man. Man. Oh, so my mom it's my one of mom, my favorite restaurants in the world, man. I love that place. My mom cooks like every meal, so okay, gotcha. <laughs> so you were getting that home cooking stuff, huh? Oh, for sure, for sure. Okay. Now, you know, we asked this on the podcast one time, Cody. If you were on death row, which I hope never happens, because we're all too good looking for prison. Now, well, maybe <laughs> not Travis. Travis is feeling me and you too good looking for prison. So you're on death row. What's that last meal going to be? You going to have your mom, mama cook you something? Oh, yeah. Honestly, I'd probably have – I'd have my dad grill me a steak. Mm. I'd have you go. my grandma make me some banana pudding uh, and probably a glass of my mom's sweet tea. There Sounds you go. like a – No, that, no that's a good, sounds like a good one to go out on. I got. I mean, I got to go out on a steak. I got to go out on a full stomach. Well, there you go. I can go tell you what Clint and I would be drinking, and that would be his mom's Kool Aid. <laughs> I need some Kool Aid. I ain't had Kool Aid in a minute. I need to get on some of that. Clint, Clint's house <laughs> at Clint's house when we were kids. His mom had a the uh, you know the rubber made pitcher of Kool Aid oh, for sure with the red on, lid sitting on the counter <laughs> all the time. Yes, sir. And we yep. were, uh, and we, uh, yeah. She All didn't right, pay so, that sugar to powder ratio either. No, she didn't. There was a, there was a lot of sugar in that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, so, um, so in high school, you have had a pretty good high school career pitching, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. And, uh, tell us about the recruiting process. Okay. So, um, my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't throw a single inning for the varsity baseball team. Like I was just, I just started at third base. Mm. I didn't pitch hardly at all. And then uh, I was pitching in like some JV games. So Mm. I was getting a little bit of work in. And after my sophomore year, I kind of grew like three or four inches that summer, it seemed like, and just started throwing harder. I didn't have any control over my body though. I looked like a little baby giraffe, but (laughs) um I, I got my first offer from Sam Houston State out at a camp that I went to. Yeah. Then shortly after that, I got a couple other schools that are smaller, Arkansas State, to offer me. And then Arkansas and Ole Miss offered me around the same time. And Arkansas offered me, and I was taking a visit in like seven days to go to Ole Miss. I had already taken my visit at Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And – it just – they got a new pitching coach uh, like three days after they offered me, uh, Arkansas did. Mm. And so I was like, you know, I don't know who they're going to get to replace this guy. 
Um, and so I just went with my gut and I enjoyed my visit and the coaches and everyone at Ole Miss. So I just thought I was making the right decision at that point in time to go there. So you went to Ole Miss. And, uh, yes. Was that a bad Twitter day? Did you have Twitter back then? Because I remember Luke Jones was on here. And I don't know if you know Luke Jones from the football team. He started off, he had committed to Arkansas and then switched to Notre Dame. And he's Ooh. like, yeah, that was a bad Twitter day. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't ever had – actually, no, I'm lying. I had Twitter my freshman year. And then I was so bad I had to delete it. <laughs> <laughs> Base, so, high, school, high school baseball, you probably didn't get the heat. That a, oh, definitely not. That a, definitely. That a high school – Although, mm-hmm. although there was two other guys on my team uh, who were both committed to Arkansas at my high school, so I did get a little bit of heat, you did know. You? And, and we go to the Razorback, Arkansas Razorbacks, like yeah, that's my you're wearing, you're wearing Razorback on your chest every game, yeah, <laughs> for sure, yeah. So you go to you go to Oxford. Uh, tell us what that was like. How, what that year was like? Um, I would say that. It was kind of a roller coaster, honestly. My freshman year was. Uh, I didn't know like how, like what I was really getting myself into. You know, I had never been to, but like two college baseball games. Nice. Um, I had watched my brother play D two baseball, and obviously that's a lot different than here. Yeah. Or somewhere like Ole Miss, um, and I kind of struggled early in the fall. Uh, wasn't very good. Didn't have really a a good off-speed pitch that I could work with. Um, but after the fall, I had a decent decent few outings in the spring inner squads, and I knew I was going to get a couple opportunities uh, early in the year and ended up having a few opportunities early in the year. I did decent. Um, I, I would have one really good outing and then one really bad outing, it seemed like. Um and then, and then I finally got a start against Arkansas State, which set me up to start against Arkansas in the SEC tournament. Mm-hmm. And when I started against Arkansas in the SEC tournament, that's when I was really like, okay, like I actually belong here, you know. Like I just went four and two-thirds, five innings against one of the best teams in the country. I think they mm-hmm. were ranked number one at the time in 2021. Yeah. So, I mean – I thought I thought that outing was really what what made me take another step in my career. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of gave me that confidence that I needed. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. But postseason didn't do didn't go too well after that for me. But honestly, as a freshman, you know, getting twenty innings or so, I, I wasn't too mad about it. Yeah. And Ole Miss had a good year that year, right? Yes, sir. We made it to a super regional in Arizona and we got beat pretty bad, but we had lost our Friday starter um, that year. Um, Gunnar Hoagland, who was a first round pick. Mm. So it was, it was tough and we struggled a little bit, uh, but, but we had some guys that, that really stepped up and obviously Doug Nikhazy was like a second round pick that year and Taylor Mm. Broadway. So we had, Two guys on the mound that were elite, you know. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm I'm sure that was a great learning process. You know, a lot of oh, us to learn that year. And for uh, sure. Now at the end of the year, though, you decided to enter the transfer portal. Yes, sir. So uh, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. So um I was in Arizona playing in the super regional. And I got to go home right after that for two days. And then I went to summer ball Mm. and I was kind of just like, you know, I was surrounded by baseball all the time. Um, Mm. I didn't know a single person outside of the baseball team at Ole Miss. Um, I didn't have any family or anything that like that nearby. My parents weren't making it all the time. Um, and so I thought I just needed a, a scenery change and just to get somewhere where I was comfortable. Mm. And my brother's roommate played at Crowder and I was, I got to, I got to go home from Arizona for a couple of days. And then I told my parents whenever I got to California two days later that I wanted to transfer. 
And I had to get into the transfer portal before July 1st. And I got and I put my name in July 3rd. Therefore, I could not go from Ole Miss to Arkansas. Okay. I had to go to a junior. I knew college. there was something there that you'd you wanted to go to Arkansas, right? But yes, I had a locker and everything, but really? uh I would have had to sit out for a whole year and not play, and I didn't want to do that. So, yeah, I ended up going to Crowder, and I honestly think that was one of the best decisions I could have ever made because Coach Lolly at Crowder and Coach Saw were really good to me, and I think they they made me a lot tougher and showed me that they really trusted me. You know, I didn't I didn't have the best year at Crowder either, and there was not a single weekend that I didn't start just because they were that confident in me. And, you know, that that helps me out a little bit, you know, knowing that they had that confidence in me. Mm. And I really enjoyed the coaches there. And I really, I really enjoyed how much I struggled, you know, going to a junior college from one of the biggest schools, SEC schools, it's like, you know, I'm going to go dominate these guys. Yeah. And it happened that way. And yeah. so that, that, can, that can really put a lot of people out, I feel like. Yeah, um, but I think I think that really helped me because it's gotten me prepared for really anything. You know, I've given up a mm. hundred runs last year, so it is what it is. I'm ready for anything. Where's Crowder at? It's in Neosho, Missouri. It's about an hour okay. and fifteen minutes north of Fayetteville. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, you know, um, a lot of junior colleges. Ba you know, junior colleges are getting a lot of more traction in baseball right now. Um, I'm just a little more aware of it, I guess, because we got a little junior college down here in Camden, and okay. they just started a team. And what's it called? Uh, Sau Tech Rockets. Okay. Yeah, I know a couple guys there, uh, and I think they had a good little recruiting class. Like I think they, they got had, some they, decent recruits. They had, Crowder. they had a guy who played a Crowder with me. Real? Yeah. Yep. I mean, they barely even. Okay. They were playing their home games up in Benton, wow. like even until they finally got their field done. Um, wow. The president of the school has been like on social media trying to, you know, getting people to help finish the field and all that kind of stuff. But, uh -huh. but anyway, it's, it's been neat kind of watching them, you know, and, and so that's just made me a little more aware. And then hearing your story, um, you know, that I can see where that, you know, Baseball is one of those sports to where all these different levels, you know, serve a great purpose sometimes oh, for, for, for people. Sure. Um, I would say that, like, I think I think junior college and, and the guys that, that are here that came from junior college, it's a lot different, you know, I mean, than coming here as a freshman. Um, mm. I think it makes you really appreciate things that – that you're given here and um, just the facilities and like having snacks all the time, literally what in anything we want and the technology, it's insane. So I think, I think junior college actually made me appreciate that a little more too. Yeah. So did you go from like the, the penthouse to the outhouse kind of in the term of facilities whenever you left Ole Miss to go to Crowder, was it a significant step down um, well, I mean, just the aim because I, I think Juco would not be on the SEC level. That's not me making fun of Crowder at all. No, not at all. I'm trying to find out like a nice way to put this, honestly. Um, the Crowder, the Crowder had a little indoor and it was pretty nice and the field's decent. Um, but like Crowder, you ain't got a field crew, you got to work for on the field every day for at least 45 minutes. Um, yeah. if it's in. in you're the one working on the field, tarp duty. You're doing tarp duties. Like I remember mm -hmm. last year we had a tarp duty at like one fifteen in the morning. Cause we got back and had a game the next day and had to put the mm -hmm. tarp out. But like the dorms at Crowder were probably the worst thing that I've ever had to live in. <laughs> um, it was different. It was, it was kind of a culture shock, honestly. Cause like, I was the last guy to make it on campus. Um, I had COVID the first week of school. Mm. Therefore, I couldn't report. And COVID was still kind of a big deal at mm. the time. So mm. I couldn't go up to Crowder yet. And so I was placed in the last dorm, which is very, like, the farthest walk. 
And <laughs> I was the only person in the house, I think, that uh, wasn't a foreign student. So it was different in that aspect yeah. as well. Um, but I got to learn a lot just about like other cultures too, which was pretty cool. You know, yeah. I'd get out from Peru to cut my hair every week and talk yeah. to him, and listen to his music. So yeah. I think that was something that I enjoyed about Crowder. Cool. Yeah. Well, and when you're in that situation, man, the best thing to do is make the best of it, you know? Oh, you got to you grow got and to. learn from it. I mean, because if you go into it whining and pouting about it and saying, man, I had it so much better then you're not going to get anything out of it. Oh, no. You're just no. going you're just gonna be unhappy the whole time. So For sure. Him bringing that up, though, because it brought back memories of me being at Arkansas Tech. Um, I played – played's a loose term. Uh, Travis can be honest about it. <laughs> I'm a at Arkansas Tech University for the football team. Okay. But I do remember pretty much the, the baseball team out there working on the field all the time. Yeah. Like, it was, like they were doing it – they were like they were doing it themselves. Like they at least made the GAs do the football field. We <laughs> much of a budget at Harvard of the South. <laughs> <laughs> football got a different budget. Football yeah. got a different budget. But uh, not at Arkansas Tech, it don't. That's <laughs> probably true. <laughs> well, you know, we had uh, Michael Turner on here last year, and that that was one of the things he said transferring even from Kent State, which is a decent sized school. Huh? But he said even coming there from you know, going from there to S to the SEC to Arkansas, he said, you have everything at your fingertips to get yep. better. Yep. He I said, mean, we got a chiropractor that comes every week, like twice a week. Yeah. To pop off the backs, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. Well, what are some of the difference, if there's a nice way, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to set you up here, Nick. What are some of the differences at the facilities at Ole Miss compared to Arkansas? You know, what What are some of the ways, you know, Arkansas is better? What are some um, things that, that may be a little bit better over there? Well, our athletic director is much better than – Yeah, Keith Carter is the freaking worst. No, the <laughs> worst. We, uh, used to, we used to hang out with Keith Carter a little bit. Keith Carter back in the day. <laughs> okay. We, we okay. know – Okay, we know Keith. I guarantee you, he no longer remembers. Yeah, us. he don't, he doesn't remember us for anything. <laughs> He's not he, aware. He doesn't mind. remember us, but you know, we got <laughs> we, he uh he he shot five three pointers in my eye in a basketball tournament one time. Oh. He tried to dunk on me. It didn't yeah. work out. Yeah, Pretty Clint good. tackled him on a dunk, and then that oh, ticked yeah. him off. I was guarding. <laughs> That ticked yeah, him he, off. He just started hitting threes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like ridiculous. But no, yeah, that's that's a good question though. Is there is there is was there many differences between Ole Miss and Arkansas as far as facilities? Um, and, I would say one thing that I like about here, and this might sound like a weird thing, <coughs> but I'm like I don't have a problem with this. Everybody's got different rules. Um, phones weren't allowed in the locker room at Ole Miss, and I just thought uh, that was different. Um, and like with not having phones in the locker room, you don't. I feel like you don't have as much like time in there together. Like if we're, like we spend, we spend hours of our day, like almost every day, just hanging out in the locker room, talking and doing whatever. And that's just something that I felt like we were kind of deprived of at Ole Miss just because we didn't have phones and like people were trying to get to their phones. So everybody would just leave so they could get to their phone instead of. Uh, so sure. coach was probably doing that. So you would hang out more. Yeah. I think but so. it ended I think. up it ended up backfiring on him yeah. and you mm -hmm. hung out and, less. I uh, this podcast before and I forgot my phone. I go, it's okay, I'll live without it. And then I go, no, I won't, and I'll get up and go get it. And it's in the <laughs> other room. <laughs> well, another thing, another thing that I like, uh, I think I think um so they had ping pong tables at Ole Miss and they were upstairs, like our ping pong tables in our locker room. And mm play music, do whatever the heck we want to in our locker room and play ping pong and it gets very competitive. Mm -hmm. So like there, <laughs> there's some things that, that might not, that probably shouldn't be said in the, in the, when we're playing ping pong. So I, I like yeah. how the ping pong is in the locker room. Well, that's team building stuff too. I mean, that's, oh, for that's, sure. it's, for sure. that's bonding. Yeah. That's cool. Well, um, <clears throat> now coming into this year, Okay. Um, you know, you, you, of course, you had a couple other guys that 
you know, including, uh, you know, Wiggins and Tiger that, you know, that you were hoping were going to be healthy. And you look pretty – you're pretty stacked at, in pitching – in the pitching rotation. Now, you're still pretty stacked, okay? We're not – you know, you're still pretty deep. I mean, things are looking pretty – still pretty good for the pitching rotation. Um, although, you wouldn't mind having – Tiger in his, uh, you know, he gonna come back. He gonna. I think he's coming back against. I don't know. I could. I would be wrong if I told you a, 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 an estimation of whenever he's coming back. Yeah, but, but it sounds like I, hopefully six weeks. Or, you know, whatever. What'd you he, say, Cody? I think he's been uh, playing a little bit of catch. I think he started playing catch like last week. So maybe Good. a few more weeks or so. I don't really know. Good. Um, well, we need. We need the. Uh, the spin cycle back in there. Spin cycle. We do. We do. I tried, but to, I, I tried to give him a nickname while he was on here. He didn't like the spin cycle. Well, Clint didn't like it either. They were, they were all bad. They, they were, were all, all my nicknames were all bad. Yeah. I think bad. that was a good <laughs> But, uh, but anyway, um, but that, you know, <coughs> uh, one of the things we saw was, of course, is now you've stepped up and gotten that third starter role. As uh, Smith has gone into the um, to the closer role to to take Tiger spot, do you foresee um, when Tiger comes back? Do you foresee that maybe staying that way, or do you think that may get moved around a little bit? Um, I have no, no way I, to know yet. No. Um, I would. I don't know. They'll probably play around with it a little, a little bit, you know. Um, I think, I think a good thing about this team and the coaches is the fact that a lot, like losing those guys, has helped. Is going to help a lot of the younger guys and including myself mm. uh, get ready for the postseason. You know, like Brady Tiger's going to come back and he's going to deal. Like that's Brady mm. Tiger. That's who he is. Mm. Um, but I think getting Ben Bybee and Parker Coyle and Gage Wood and some of the younger guys, Austin Ledbetter, like getting <clears throat> getting more innings now is going to help us later in the season. Yeah. So now, now you now you have, earlier in the season came mostly out of the bullpen. Yes, sir. And now you now you're starting. Um, had a great outing weekend before last. Yep. Yes, sir. Against Auburn. Yes, sir. You shut, them you shut them down. It was beautiful. I lo I loved it. Um, are you do you prefer do you prefer starting over coming out of the bullpen, and how and, and how do you have to kind of switch your mentality when they say, okay, you're no longer coming out of the bullpen, you're starting now. I've noticed. Okay, so I think the biggest difference is, and and I think everybody wants to be a starter. Everyone. Mm -hmm. So I think, I I mean. I want to be a starter. So okay. does everyone else. So, um, but I think that the biggest difference in the mentality is the fact that you can kind of be saved out of the bullpen, you know, like you go in there and walk two guys straight. They're going to bring the next guy in. Mm -hmm. If you're starting, like you're going to, they're going to let you ride out there for a little bit yeah. for sure. So, I think I think that's the the main difference, and I kind of like that that you're that you're by yourself for a little bit and not really re you don't have the thought at all of oh someone's going to come in and get me you know right well and you get a chance to it's sort of like Muss on the basketball team not calling timeouts all the time you get a chance to work yourself through those tough times that oh that you, sure that you that you're going to have. Definitely. Where when you're a reliever, you get out there, you get in a tough time, you know, Van Horn may say, Whoop, nope. Yep. Bring them on back. Bring them on back. Bring them up. Yep. And so, yeah, I could, I could see where that would definitely be a lot different, you, you know, your mentality. Now, this so, year's, a, um, you know, y'all have got lots of new pieces this year. We do. You know, there's been lots of lots of transfers in. You know, we talked about junior college. You got some junior college guys. You got some guys that, you know, have come from 
uh, you know, some bigger schools, you know, some other, you know, decent sized schools and, and different places. Um, mm-hmm. And one of those places is where you got new players is that catcher. And yeah. uh, I know that's important for you. Talk about how that transitions being, I know, I guess Roland is kind of, stepped up and he's become the guy, I guess, um, or at least the main guy, um, at that, that catcher position. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about how he's doing and how, and just those catchers in general, how they've come in and, and taken that position because that was a, that was one as fans, we were, you know, we were kind of worried about cause you know, especially after last year, Michael Turner became kind of a fan favorite. You know, the whole and then they had Casey Opens before that, so we're, yeah. we're a little spoiled. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just all you we're spoiled. So, well, I I love having this conversation about our catchers because there's no one on the team out of all the 40 guys that work harder than those two guys. Like, mm-hmm. those two guys, Parker Rowland and, and Hudson Polk, are the hardest workers on the team. And when you see them doing their thing every day, like, they're putting in extra work. They're talk, They're very vocal guys, both of them. Um, I have really good relationships with both of these guys. I would honestly say Parker's probably one of my best friends on the team, and I was actually going to uh, mention y'all might need to talk to him or something soon. But yeah. – uh, because I think he's got a good story as well. He's got a really good story. But um, cool. we'd love we'd love to have him on. Yeah, I, I think we just those, have, to, I, we'll have to talk to our sponsor, Hometown Roofing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay. yeah, I, I think I think those guys like you can't go into you can't get on the mound and not trust your catcher. And I don't think there's a single person on the pitching staff that doesn't trust them. Like we we have more trust in those guys than we put into anyone. Um, I think, like I said, they're super hard workers and they're literally doing whatever we can to win. That's, that's what both of them are all about. So, well, you know, and we, we mentioned before that we had Michael Turner on last year. And one of the things that surprised us, and I think people that I talked to that watched, that watched or listened to that episode was he told us about how he's pretty much making all the calls that oh yeah the, the pitching coach and and van horn trust him trusted him to make pretty much all the calls so it was yep. roland pretty much got that i mean these these new guys same way with them oh yeah they call pitches um they've always called pitches i think that's something that coach hobbs and dvh and all the pitchers and the catchers together like we I think we're all kind of working together collectively um if I don't like a pitch call I'm gonna shake um I mean honestly I'm free to do whatever I want up there and I really like that you know so how often would you say you shake you shake them off is it once in a blue moon or is it like I'm not feeling it um maybe I would say the average is maybe one in maybe one an inning. Okay. And it would just be like I don't I can't think of really even a, a good example, but uh yeah. sometimes yeah, I, I shake about once well, in yeah, a Yeah, sometimes you get out there and you're just like, yeah, I'm not not maybe you're just not feeling it for whatever reason or you know, you maybe you don't feel like your arm can deliver at that point. You've got your reasons. Uh-huh. Now, now, when Coach Hobbs comes out there to the mound, you probably is it usually you know when he's coming out and like maybe you've walked one or two, does he usually like man get your head out your butt or is it more like okay or is it more technical stuff? What's a you know obviously Travis is a preacher here so we can't curse like I do in real life, but <laughs> we uh, um, but but what's a typical mound visit by Coach Hobbs? What what kind of what, what would you say that would go? He's very <clears> – <throat> he, he doesn't beat around the bush at all. Um, the other day he came up to me in L- against LSU and came out there and he was like – they just hit the two-run home run, Cruz did, and he was like, all right, that's all they get. Like, you got to leave those guys here. And so I think like two pitches later I got three or so pitches after that I got out of the inning. So most of the time it's just like, hey, here's what you got to do. 
Um, I wouldn't say that there's ever going to be a time when he comes out there and I don't know. I don't know. I've only had one mound visit with him again. And uh, okay. I think, I think he knows how to talk to, to us. Um, he's very, he's very confident in us too. And, and I like that about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you, you, we talked about earlier that, I mean, Cruz, that shot he hit off of you was the wind, the wind caught it. We'll go with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you've got to just tip your hat to the guy. Go, okay. You got me. And when you, when you step foot out there, it don't matter how many home runs they've hit. You take a chance of that happening. Oh, so, for sure. How, sure. how hard is it? To, I mean, do you, were you just immediately the next guy? Like, all right, I got I got to let it go. Or, yes. or how hard is it to let it linger? Um, I think I think you can let it linger. Um, obviously, like, I, it was the first inning. It's the first inning, you know. And and in my head, I'm thinking like, hey, I got to go a few more. Like, I got to give him at least three or four more. Um, yeah. And and in my head, I'm just thinking like, uh, that's two runs. What a, I mean, we can come back from two runs. I just got to keep them there. And obviously it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to, but that was the game plan. Yeah. No, I just, I, I just kind of want to get your thought process when, when that happens. I mean, I'm not trying to bring up bad stuff. Oh no, you're totally fine. I need to talk about it. I need to talk yeah. about it. Well, it, I mean, it, it happens. It just, oh yeah. Does. And that dude's going to be a guy from my high school pitched at Arkansas tech when I was there. Um, okay. And he had a shot hit off him. Like, it cleared a parking lot, hit the building that I had study hall in. I mean, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> I've, never, I've, I've, I've been to professional baseball games, been to games at, um, at Bomb. I've never seen a whole ball hit that hard in my life. <laughs> he was a Delta State pit player that he ended up going pro. But oh, yeah, it Delta was, State's usually pretty good. My brother well, always- I mean, have you ever been to Cleveland, Mississippi? Oh yes, I would get really good at anything to leave Cleveland, Mississippi. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I agree with that. <laughs> it's, it's awful. It's like now, awful. now Cody, like, growing up, who were you a fan of baseball wise? Um, Scherzer. Um, <sighs> you know, used to I thought I was a position player and. <laughs> I what liked, position did you play? You said third earlier? Yeah, I was a third baseman. And I liked – when I was younger, me and my dad used to just watch the Cardinals. So, I was like a big David Freeze and Albert Pujols fan. There you go. Oh, see, I'm a Cardinals fan. I, I, I remember I, – I'll, I'll never think anything ill of David Freeze. I don't care if he just had oh, that yeah. one season. He's the man. He is. He is the man. Uh, I mean – Dang, what was I gonna say? Yeah, my 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 kindergarten, and when I was in kindergarten, we had this like "Who you want to be when you grow up" thing, and I wore yeah. like an Al jersey, and I was like, I want to be this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad That's I can't. Hit it, yeah. Oh well. Well, so you uh, what was your batting average in high school? You said you couldn't hit. I batted okay. I batted like three fifty seven my freshman year. And the last at bat of my freshman year, this dude was throwing pretty hard, and he hit me in the face. And after that, Ooh. after that, I was not comfortable in the box ever again. Yeah. So see, when I when I put, of course, I, I mean, once I got old enough for football, baseball was no 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 longer there for me. But um, I actually didn't mind getting hit because that was the one of the only ways I was going to get on base. So, well, Travis, so, you might live on more batting than Cody does. Just a smidge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a yeah. smidge. But, um, I, getting hits the worst. Yeah. Yeah, I had, I had a little more cushion there. I was, you know, oh, well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's – uh, I could see where that would uh, that would make you. So, you're not you're not sad they got DHs and uh, – in the pro when you when you go pro you're not going to be sad to you know 
I don't think I'm gonna be sad edge. about it, but I think I'm gonna want. I think I'm gonna like. There's gonna be a point in time where I'm like, all right, I just want one AB, but it'll never happen. Yeah, it'll never hey, happen. You, you always get out there in the pregame of uh, batting practice, and maybe I should try that. Try just to, go hop in group just one. On get track. out there and just see what uh-huh. happens. Just, just hop in the table first tomorrow. That's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I think that would yeah, go come down. on, coach. Put me in. <laughs> no, no, what, what, no, Cody. What is your fastball top top out at? What's what's the? Um, I think I've hit ninety seven one time. Um, okay, you, yeah. But when usually three ninety five. Yeah. When you're at Vanderbilt, I want you to hit that ninety seven mark, but I want you to miss everything. And that Dandy Whistler, I want you to beat him. He's got right it. Oh, I think that was just a hoax. Was it? I think it was a hoax. Oh, maybe it was. I've watched some like highlights of Vanderbilt on wheels, and I've heard the Whistler, but I didn't know if they got like a duplicate or what. <laughs> yeah, Clint has a vendetta against him. For sure. I just don't like because he's annoying. He makes yeah. their games. I mean, not that I'm going to watch Vanderbilt baseball. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unless they're playing y'all, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, but he makes their games unwatchable, even if they, even if they won't. I mean, it's kind of like you know. Yeah, so what's probably it. your, what's your most comfortable pitch? Are you, I like throwing my. I think my fastball is my best pitch. Um, I think I like throwing my slider. Um, I need to throw my change up more, but yeah, I mean, I like showing the curveball every now and again, just getting a strike and then trying to put guys away with my slider. Gotcha. Does your fastball have a little bit of movement on it to where it's? Yeah, it's got, it's got some arm side run and it's got a little bit of carry. So, but it, I think sometimes it depends because I'll throw a pitch that's like down and down and in to a righty and it'll just sink. So just depends sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So what, as long as it's moving you, a little bit. Yeah. What's your different grip that you have to get as, on a fastball as compared to a slider for us just dummies? Um. So this is my fastball grip. I just go across the horseshoe. So that would be like the horseshoe, right? Okay. I'm just cross it, put my thumb underneath like that. And then my slider, it's going to be not across the horseshoe. That's not the horseshoe. And I'm just going to hold it like this, put my finger on the side and this is my slider. So I'm going to let it kind of run off of my middle finger. I want it to come off my middle finger. So it gets that spin that I want like that. Gotcha. I love how my man just had a baseball just right there. I know that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're listening to this on a on Apple Podcast or Spotify or something like that, like when he's describing that, he had a ball in his hand already, and he picks it up. <laughs> it's like it was like right there. It's like me with Anna's thumbtacks here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baseball. That's right. So talk about some of your uh, talk about some of your other. You know, we, we've we've talked about some of your teammates. Talked about the catchers. Who who are some of the guys that you think? Um, I mean, not to single. I mean, you're you're hoping we see a lot of good things out of a lot of guys this year. But who do you think? Like, who would you say, guys? Later in the year, watch out for these guys. You're, you're you're gonna see more from them as the year goes on. Um. I think guys like like Diggs, um, I, I I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about Diggs, but he's got he's got something in him that's clutch. And I think, I mean, he comes up clutch probably more than anyone. And that's what I was thinking when, as you said his name, I was thinking clutch. Yeah, I, I and I just I. I I can't wait to see him play in big games later in the mm-hmm. season because I think that's when he'll really come alive. Also, I think Parker Rollins, one of those guys. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I think Brady Slavens is only going to get better. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he might have had a, a slow weekend this weekend or whatever, but I mean, he'll bounce back. He's a fifth year guy. He he knows what he's doing. So yeah. 
but it's about it's about what we got right now. Gotcha. I think I think also I think I think Will McIntyre's like that. Like last year in the postseason, he he was unreal, and I think I think he's gonna do it again. Mm-hmm. I think it's only gonna get better. Keep coming, huh? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. No, I I do think that with the all three that we have right now, we've had the best starting rotation we've had in quite some time. Um, I I really do. I I mean, I've got faith in all three of you guys. No, I don't coach. I just sit here. I mean, I do, but in my chair. (laughs) The shift. The shift is stupid. (laughs) But Um, because I'm a grouchy old man. Now, did you have a welcome to the SEC moment? Or like welcome to college moment, either at Ole Miss, Crowder, or or Arkansas yet, where you're just like, okay, this um, is um, this is real. I, I think I think that happened like my first um, my first couple outings at Ole Miss in the fall, but I don't really remember any of them. Uh, I do remember though my first outing against an SEC team was against Vandy in the ninth. And I came in, uh, first pitch double, next pitch like home run, and I was like, okay, these guys are good. <laughs> yeah, but I ended up getting three up, three down after that. And but I think it was their eight nine that got the both get that got both the hits <laughs> off of me, and then I went three up, three down on their one two three guys. Well, that's um, you don't want to you don't want to mess with them bottom <laughs> of the lineup guys. You want them to be like, hey, if to get I get this danger, I'll pitch to the heart of the lineup. That's right. You just served it up there, my man. <laughs> so, Cody, what's your major? Uh, criminology. Criminology. Yes, sir. So, what would you uh, what would you want to do with that? I don't know. I really don't know. I want to go into the Navy. I want to be. I want to. I want to do something like. I want to be a SEAL. Oh, I think that's what I want to do, but. I don't really know, like, what else I would do, honestly. Like, maybe be, like, a cop or something. But I don't know. Yeah. I just don't want that target on my back, you know? Yeah. Did, did you watch that World's Toughest Test where they had all the celebrities go through the Special Forces training? I have not. I have not. I, I was curious. It just, yeah, yeah. I watched it, but then again, I have no life, so. <laughs> they had um, <laughs> Danny Amendola and uh, – oh, yeah. Dwight Not Howard young. did it. Oh, okay. And, yeah, I was um, a good bit through, and he's like, "Look, I'm old. I've had enough of this yeah. crap. I'm done." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but, too much. Well, yeah. no, that's cool, man. Um, so, I mean, possibility of maybe you know, if baseball doesn't go to, go where you want to or whatever, then maybe even signing up for military or something like that, huh? And if yes, not, if you go in the law enforcement, me and Travis both have cousins you can arrest. That's right. Uh, yeah. That's well, right. We, we'll keep, we got family that will keep you busy. That's yeah. right. You can probably take out a probably a good bit of uh, the meth epidemic in our area if you take but out all my cousins. Arresting cousins of ours. That's uh, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the kind of family we got. So, anyway. <laughs> That's not when that. Um, from uh, my dad's parents, my dad's side. So, <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. What did your dad do for a living? My dad builds houses. Uh, okay. He worked at a tire factory at Cooper Tire for like twenty five years. <laughs> yeah. He quit doing that though. Now he's you just building. What? So did he? Did they move to Camden or? Did, well, well, how's your? Uh, no, 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 no. My little brother's just playing uh, the high school game there. He goes to Arkansas, High, so they have a game tonight against Camden. Oh, okay. They're just playing tonight there. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Well, we gotcha. both completely misunderstood you earlier. Oh, yeah, okay. I, okay. I, yeah, I, I thought he was. I thought he was going to school there. I was like, No, my bad. My okay. bad. <laughs> so, was either one of your parents athletes? Because it sounds like all three of you. Well, they may have more than three kids, but it sounds like the boys are all athletes. Your younger uh, brother, your brother. We're, my, me and my brothers are pretty athletic. Uh, my mom was is probably the most unathletic human on earth. Um, <laughs> and my dad, he's he's pretty athletic, but he can't straighten either one of his arms because he's broken both of them. So like his range of motion is just not there anymore. I got it. <laughs> yeah. 
So what position does your brother, your oldest brother, play? He was a pitcher as well. Richard Harding? Yes, sir. But he had a little different than me. I think he had three or three or four different arm surgeries. So his career was a lot, a lot different than, than mine's been. And he was there all four years. Good deal. Well, um, Cody, you know, this one of the things going on right now is the NIL stuff. Have you been able to do some NIL things? Uh and are you looking for some things? You give a little commercial here, I guess. Um, I would say that I am looking for some opportunities to do some things. Um, I got a I got a brand that just hit me up on Instagram talking about wanting to make uh merch. So it's the same brand that Parker Rowland uh just just got his merch with. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I might do that. Um so but if you're listening know. out there watching, follow Cody on Instagram and maybe you'll see something out there where you can buy some shirts or something in the future. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna it's gonna be out, it's gonna be out soon before before next weekend. Okay, good. So. Now, now we are gonna send you um we're gonna send you a big some big C bigger T swag. We're gonna send you oh. I mean I'm sure I'm sure Brady's been wearing yours around. Um, I think I've seen it. <laughs> Did he? Okay, I was just making it up. I figured he just like oh, I've, sure. I've, I've, I've seen it. I'm telling you. Okay, okay. we're gonna send, we're gonna send you a shirt. Now, now we had Cam Ball, one of the defensive tackles on the football team, on, and we sent him his money for the podcast. And they were like, "Hey, send us your address for the shirt." And we never heard from him again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's almost like he just wanted the money and didn't care about the shirt. Oh year. no! Yeah. Yeah. That, that was that was our four way into merch. We got the yeah. shirts, and, and, okay. and, and you count what we spend on them and uh, factor all the batteries. We lost about four hundred bucks. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! That's crazy. Uh, uh, well, man, um, we for giveaways to give to guys like you for coming on the podcast and stuff. So, so uh. Are you enjoying living up in Fayetteville right now? Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, my, I got an uncle that lives not far from here. So mm-hmm. me and him go out to eat every now and again with, and I'll go with his family and it's nice to have that, you know, yeah. uh, and, and my parents being able to make it up here more often. And my mm-hmm. brother lives in Conway. He's not too far. Um, yeah. Well, your brother's just right down the street from me. Yep. Yep. Cl- he is. Clint's in Greenbrier. So okay. Greenbrier, I yep. work in Conway. So Yep. My brother does something with engineering in Conway. I don't know what he does, honestly. I don't do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, uh we do appreciate you coming on here. And yes, sir. Uh, oh, man, we're you. we're anxious to see you continue this year. And uh we're gonna be rooting for you. And uh, you know, you do it. You handle, you know, like, like your teammates. I mean, y'all, y'all handle yourself so well. You're well spoken. Uh, you're a great representative of the Hogs. That's what one of the things that makes it so easy to root for y'all, man, because you're good guys, uh, both on the field and off the field. But, um, you know, hey, the LSU thing, like you said, you just got to put that in the rearview mirror, and you just gotta. You got to keep going forward. That that one feels a lot bigger. It's necessary. You got to face some adversity. You have to. I That's think right. it's something that I have to do for sure. Yeah. Because then the good days don't feel as good if you if you just have a good day every day. You know. That's right. You're gonna learn and grow from it as you continue uh, throughout this season. Yeah, I believe you've got uh, Omaha tomorrow, and then Omaha. Uh, Alabama this weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get them. Stupid looking elephants off the field. Got to. We got yes. to. <laughs> well, man, uh, we sure do appreciate you. We want to thank, uh, as Clint said earlier, we want to thank Hometown Roofing for sponsoring this episode, for sponsoring Cody coming on tonight. And um, our buddy Robert at Hometown Roofing, folks, if you need your roof uh, done, if especially with the weather that's been through lately, if you've got shingles laying in the yard or you've had some help, come through and you want they'll come out inspect it for free won't cost you a thing and they can tell you and a lot of times they try to work with your insurance company to get you a new roof and uh so check them out uh clint you got that number on you 
No. But he'll get it in just a second. I'll get it right now. But, you know uh, what I'm going to do? I'm just going to give Robert's cell phone number up. That's exactly what I'm going to do. That's right. Because what he'll do care. is he'll just forward your message on to somebody else. But Robert Branscombe's cell phone number. And if y'all want to prank this number, go ahead. It's 501 <laughs> 733-8790. Robert or Cammy Branscombe, they'll take good care of you. That's right. But I uh, don't know if he wants me to give his personal cell phone number out for that, but I do. That's right. <laughs> I got we, it, we we appreciate him big time. And uh Cody, man, we appreciate you. And uh yes, I appreciate keep it up, man. Keep it up and enjoy it. Yes, sir. You're, you're getting to you're getting to live the dream. A lot of little kids, you know. Definitely dream you know and then you dreamed you yes, know sir. and it's a blessing for sure man and enjoy those moments man breathe it in get out there on that mound just breathe it in and you know that's what baseball is about is little moments man and just yes, uh, sir. breathe it in enjoy it and um uh, and we're gonna be back here rooting you on for sure yes sir. All right. well, that's great all right folks clint we did it again man another great interview hey, another one wasn't too painful, was it, Cody? It wasn't. It was awesome. I enjoyed this. <laughs> All right, good. I like talking. I'm a talker. So. <laughs> All right. Well, man, we do appreciate you. And, folks, like and share this episode. Okay? Share it on social media. Let people know about it. Let your your aunties and your uncles, Auntie Boo Boo and Uncle Tim and right. them, yeah. they, uh, let them know about it. And or uh, cousins, let them know. Hey, <laughs> let's spread the word. We gotta let hey, everybody. And Cody's, they're gonna whoop Omaha. We're going to. And as they, Omaha. they're gonna whoop Omaha on the road to Omaha. What? Oh what? yeah. That's, oh yeah. Omaha Hawks. Come on now. They're playing them in the middle of the season. Here we go. go on. <laughs> hey, go Hogs. Yes, sir. Hey. Go Hogs. Yeah. Sweat, work, filthy, dirt, harvest, hurt, kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard drives So I can sow the seed Ain't afraid of no aches and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more